So you want to make a door in Roblox Studio. Well, I have the tutorial for you. If this door interests you, stay tuned for the whole tutorial and you'll have a door just like it. Let's get started. Okay, so I've created a new place file and the first thing we're going to do is create the door itself. So I'm going to add a part to the workspace. We're going to make it the wood color. And then we're going to make it the wood material. And I'm going to resize it so then it is four by seven, seven studs tall. And then I'm going to resize it so that it is 0.5 in thickness. So that's the door base. And then I'm going to create a frame around it that the door base door will sit within. And let's recolor the frame so we can differentiate the base of the door. And we'll also make it wood planks material. Now let's add a handle. I'm just going to add a new part and resize it to 0.5 and 1 height. I'm also going to resize it so that it's 0.1 in thickness. However, I'm going to resize it again so that it extends 0.1 outside the other side of the door. Now we can just move it to wherever you think the handle should go. That looks about right. I'm also going to make it just a little bit gray and then make it smooth plastic. The next thing we're going to want to do is create a hinge for the door. So I'm actually going to take the base part and um, duplicate it. And then I'm going to resize it. So then it's about 0.5 in width and uh, length. And you might see that it's clipping through the base of the door part. So let's take that base part, make it transparent for right now and then let's get that part that we put inside for the hinge we're going to rename it to hinge so we can index it later what we're going to want to do is just make it a little bit smaller and so it should be inside the door now and we're just going to move it to the very edge of the door frame and then we're going to take our base part which i will rename to base and we're going to make it um, visible again. Whoops, I made it invisible. There we go. So now we should have a frame, a part called base, a hinge, and a handle. Let's rename the handle to handle. Okay. Now let's select all these parts we have and group them into a model and call it door. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is go into door again and just to make it easier I'm going to make the base door transparent again. Let's make it 0.8 right now. So we're going to work with the hinge and I'm going to first duplicate it and with the duplication I'm going to rename it to hinge closed and then I'm going to duplicate it again and then I'm going to rotate this one so that it is, we're rotating at 90 degrees and then I'm rotating it a little bit more and this will represent the angle of which the door opens to. So I'm wanting it to extend out this direction here. So I'm gonna take that hinge closed or that part we just made that we rotated and call it hinge open. Now I'm going to take both hinge closed and hinge open and make them transparent. And we will make all of these parts. I'm going to select all the parts and anchor them. Let's, whoops, let's take the base door again and make it not transparent, visible. And now let's select the base and the handle. And we're going to make them um, unanchored and that is so that when the ba when the hinge rotates um, they'll be able to move with that hinge so let's turn off anchored on the base and handle parts but now we're going to want to weld both of these parts to the hinge so 
first I'm just going to work with the base part. I'm going to insert a weld constraint and I'm going to set the property of the weld constraint part zero to the base and part one to the hinge. This welds the part to each other. And then I'm also going to copy and paste that weld constraint to the handle, but I'm going to edit the part zero property and change it to the handle. And now we have the base and handle are anchored to the hinge. So now if we want to open a door, all we have to do is rotate the hinge. So that's the doors complete. Now let's start coding the actual opening part. So within the base, I'm going to insert a proximity prompt. And inside it, I am going to insert a script. Inside the script, I'm going to make a variable called prompt, and that will be equal to script.parent. We're going to connect a function to the prompts event. We're going to connect it to prompt.triggered next and then we're going to add a function within it this function will run when the prompt is triggered and we also get past the player that triggered it but for this door we don't really need that the next thing we're going to want is the door which is going to be equal to the prompt dot parent dot parent oops an equal sign there We'll also want the base, which is door, wait for child, base. We're going to want the hinge. And that's door, wait for child, hinge. We're going to want hinge open, which is door, wait for child, door open, or hinge open. We're going to want hinge closed is door, wait for child, hinge closed. And finally, we're going to want to create a debounce variable so that we can't just repeatedly open and close the door as much as we want. And it's going to start as true. So now we're actually going to start coding the door opening and closing. And the movement of the door opening is going to be done through tween service. So let's get that service real quick. I'm going to put it at the top. That's game get service tween service. Within the triggered function now, we're going to check to see if debounce is true. And if it is, we're going to set debounce to false. So um, if it triggers again before debounce is set back to true, it won't run. The next thing we're going to want to do is in the door model itself, so I'm going to click the door model here and in the Explorer tab or actually in the properties tab, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and create an attribute and it's going to be called is open. And it's going to be, be a Boolean, which is a true or false. And we're going to leave it unchecked because it's going to start out closed. Now, going back into the script, we're going to want to see, um, we're going to want to set it to whatever it's not. So if it's open, when this is triggered, we want it to be set to close. And if it's closed, we want it to be set to open. So let's get the door first. And we're going to want to set the attribute of is open to. And then this is the little tricky part. We're going to say not door get attribute is open. So basically, we're setting it to whatever it isn't. If it's true, it will be set to false. And if it's false, it will be set to true. And now we can grab that attribute um, is open is equal to door get attribute is open. So now we'll get if it actually is supposed to be open or not. Then we're going to add an if statement. If is open, then we're going to want to add code here to actually open the door. We're also going to want an else statement where this code will run if it's supposed to be closed. So the code for both is basically the same thing. If it's open, we're going to want to uh, move the door to be open. So let's create a tween. Using tween service, we're going to create a tween. The instance is the hinge. 
And then we're going to just create a tween info inside here. And a good value is like 0.35. That's how long the tween will take to complete. Uh, we're going to create a table and it's going to have the property C frame and it's going to be equal to hinge open dot C frame. And now we're going to want to play the tween. And now that we play the tween, we also want to wait until it's over. So tween dot completed. So the tween has an event called completed and we're just going to call the wait function on it. So it's going to wait for it to complete. And we're going to copy and paste this all into the else, but rather than setting the C frame with the table to hinge open, we're going to do hinge closed dot C frame. And then after the if statement, we're going to add the debounce is equal to true. So that will allow us to open the door again. So let's see what we have so far. Let's play the game. And Yep, so it just says interact right now. Let's see what happens when we do. It opens and it closed. There's a couple things we want to work on here. One of them is that rather than saying open and close, it just says interact. Uh, we want to change that. And another problem is that you can see uh, the door is like hidden me and moving my character. So the, it's not too much of a problem when you're opening it this way. But if you are opening it from here, yeah, that you don't want the door to just whack the player like that. So let's close out of the game. What we're going to want to do is look at the door, um, the proximity prompt itself, and we're going to change the action text to open. Because that's it's closed at first, so the action text should be open. But in the script, if the door is supposed to be open when we trigger it, uh, we're going to want to change the proximity prompt action text to close and on in the else statement we're going to want to change it back to open that should fix the the proximity prompt text and finally what we'll want to do is make it so that let's go back to the door in the workspace and um, we're going to first Take the handle and we're going to make it non-collidable so we're going to turn off can collide it's going to be set to false and then finally going back into the script when it's activated we're going to want to set the base part can collide to false and when it's done opening or closing we'll want to set it back to true and let's see what that does so now we have the open and it changes the close when we open it. And then if we were to activate it again while we're standing right here, it goes through us, but I still can't go through the door because it uh, it's can collide turned back on. And again, it says open. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did find it helpful, don't forget to like the video so others can find it. And as well, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Peace.